From the Horst Athletic Center on the campus of Lancaster Bible College in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, this is LBC Men's Basketball. Welcome. Thanks for watching. I'm Pete Stover. LBC Athletics competes in the NCAA Division III and is a member of the Northeastern Athletic Conference, NEAC, and the National Christian College Athletic Association, NCAA. The LBC Chargers would like to thank these sponsors for their support. Kistler Tiffany Benefits, online at ktbenefits.com. Orthopedic Associates of Lancaster, on the web at fixbones.com. World Team, online at us.worldteam.org. Lancaster Toyota, let's go places. And Pennsylvania Leadership Charter School, on the web at palcs.org. This is the uh, NEAC championship. We have the uh, NEAC final game of the uh, tournament coming up here. The Chargers taking on the Marsville Mustang, Marsville State Mustangs today. Uh, so far this season, the Chargers are undefeated. They uh, added another win to their column uh, last night and the uh, win against SUNY Poly. Uh, Chargers now 26-0, 19-0 in the NEAC. And the uh, Marsville State Mustangs bring a 19-7 record and a 15-3 and the NEAC uh, to LBC today. Chargers basketball coming up in just a few minutes, uh, but first uh, here's LBC head coach Zach Filson. I mean, we're excited. This is one of the things that we've been working all year towards. Try to continue to try to get better, continue to take steps in the right direction to get to this point and, and accomplish one of the goals that they set out to, to accomplish. So it's not the, the last one. We, we want to continue. Our, our hope is we can get this win today and then keep it rolling after that. But it is a, it's a Exciting time and exciting opportunity. And guys, guys are ready to go. I think they got some nerves out of, of the first half yesterday when we didn't play especially well. We were able to regain composure and have a good second half. And I think we'll, I think we'll be much more comfortable and, and play more like we're capable of today. You know, not to sound like we're bragging, but do you think that um, the level of play that LBC has had this year has improved the conference play? Uh, what What do you see out there? I think so. I think I think we are getting more notoriety for our conference is maybe the, the best way to put it. More people are, are seeing the NEAC, they're talking about the NEAC right now because of the success we've had. And, and there's been good teams before. I mean, Morrisville State has had very, very good teams the last couple a couple years ago. We went to Sweet 16 in late A. I guess Pauly went, or SUNY IT went before that. So there's been some good teams that people have heard about the NEAC. I think that we're just continuing to, to raise the bar as a conference and, and hopefully we are a help in doing so in that, in that area. Yeah, it wouldn't be one team that's actually contributing to that. Several have, as you as you mentioned, of course. Um, what about today? You have Marshville uh, today, and uh, in the past that hasn't been a pleasant memory for LPC uh, you know, in, in, in the previous years. Yeah, they're pl they're playing really well. They they've they've strung off a lot of wins in a row. I think they lost to Galley Dev. Besides that, besides that's the last time they played us, I think they've only lost once, if I remember right. So they're playing really well. They've made some adjustments from how they were playing earlier in the year and playing a lot more zone. They have kids that can really shoot it and then an all-conference uh, post-player four-man type. So we got to come ready to go. We got to relax and, and play our game. I think if we if we do that, it, it should be it should be a fun one. It's going to be a fun environment and, and hopefully hopefully some really good basketball. And uh, the mood of the team, the guys um, all set? Yeah, they are. They're, they're, they're excited. They're excited and I think they're loose and I think we're, they're ready just to compete compete really hard and see what we can do. We have, we have confidence in our abilities. If we play the game that we feel like we can play, we have a very good chance. And then they trust that and they understand that. And then we just need to go out and, and relax and, and play basketball. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Coach Zach fills in with us a little bit earlier, just uh, well, less than an hour ago, talking to us uh, on the court. And uh, we'll have the jump ball uh, coming up in a few minutes. We'll have some preliminaries, too. Uh, Bob McMichael will take care of that from the floor here in a bit. Also today we have uh, doing play-by-play. -play. Uh, Josh Beers will join us soon. And we have Zach Freeman uh, covering stats for us as well from uh, the uh, scorer's table. So uh, a lot of good uh, coverage here for you this afternoon as the uh, LBC Chargers men take on the Marshall State Mustangs coming up. After this game today, we'll have the uh, women's uh, championship as well. That'll be coming along at around 2.30 this afternoon, uh, maybe a little bit later, depending on whether we have the uh, ceremonies for the men's championship following the men's game today. I'm Pete Stover. Thanks for uh, joining us today. We hope that you'll invite others to uh, join in as well. And uh, we hope that you also will be able to uh, 
Stay with us for the women's game this afternoon, uh, too. Less than 90 seconds to go. Bob McMichael coming up in just a minute with the preliminaries for today's game. National Anthem. Leading us in prayer today will be LBC's Provost, Dr. Philip Dearborn, and singing the National Anthem today will be LBC Senior, Mariah Keener. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this gorgeous day. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to be here together. Thank you for these men, all of the preparation that they've put into this day. Father, keep them safe. We pray that our referees will have wisdom. And Father, we pray that this will all honor and glorify you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleam broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air
The house is full today at Horst, and we're getting ready for the jump ball. And uh, we're going to have a lot of uh, loud cheering from the Red Sea and elsewhere across the uh, Horse Athletic Center today. So looking forward to the excitement from the gym today. And uh, giving us all the play-by-play -play this afternoon, well, let's introduce once again Josh Beers. Thanks, Pete, and great to be here with you this afternoon for today's championship game. Torrey, Barlow, Hoos, Halbert, and Ward, the starting five for Morrisville. Mellinger, Keltner, Perry, Williams, and Dunstan for the Chargers. And this place is electric as we open up today's game. Not an empty seat in the house. The best basketball you'll find in Lancaster County. And here we go with a tip. Dunstan and Hoos to dump it up. Tip one by Dunstan, Williams controls to Mellinger who walks it across. Morrisville opens up in their 2-3 matchup zone. Lob pass to Perry for the dunk. Williams finds Perry for the dunk and it's 2-0 and this place just about exploded. Little bit of early pressure for Morrisville. Barlow gets it across the half court line. The Chargers have opened two or three times that way this season and it worked to a dunk and got the crowd right into it. Long jumper, well off the mark from Ward. Perry controls the rebound. Williams pushes to Dunstan, thought about a three. Swings it back to Williams, over to Perry right side. High screen from, Pe from uh, Dunstan, thinks I've got Keltner in the corner, drives in, loses the handle, gets it back to Mellinger. Perry up top, swings to Williams, long three-pointer, got it, and it's 5 nothing. And the start the Chargers wanted, they're getting. Up 5 nothing, and I'm telling you, Williams shoots three-point shots the way I shoot layups and warm-ups 20 years ago. Oh, Dunstan with a clean block and the first mistake from the official. Calling the ball in contact, I had as good a view as he did, but he called the foul. Oh, they're going to get Keltner on the foul. I'm not sure if he was even within vicinity, but they called it on him, so they'll shoot two. Torre goes for the line, shooting two. First team all-conference player. Torre converts the first one. Torre gets a pair and it's 5-2 early in Chargers. Just under 19 minutes to go. We're underway here to at a raucous Horst Athletic Center. Morrisville sitting in the 2-3. It'll be interesting to see how the Chargers run their offense throughout the day. Finds Keltner, Dunstan, corner three. No good, rebounds controlled by Hoos. And Morrisville looks to run. Drew drives it in, kicks it left, right side to Holbert. Long three-pointers in the air and good. Trent Ward for three, and it's all tied up at five. Dunson in the corner, ball's knocked free and turned over. Stolen by Barlow, and Williams commits the foul. One thing you know about Morrisville, they've been here before. They're not going to be rattled by this kind of setting. This is a rematch of the 2014 NIA Conference Final when Morrisville won that game 73 to 65. They led by 19 at halftime. Driving basket by Torre, and he's got four, and the Morrisville has their first lead of the night. Seven straight to answer the Chargers, 5-0 run to start. Williams looks to answer and does. Nice high screen from Keltner, and then they turn it over. One thing you're seeing early on here that Morrisville looks like they want to play at the Chargers' tempo. Since the ball was not touched, the Chargers will inbound under, inbounds underneath their own basket. Williams to throw it in. Brings it into Perry. Keltner a three, and he's got it. And the Chargers answer that 7-0 run with five of their own. Keltner had 25 the first time he saw Marsville, and he's going to be a key because of his diversity inside and outside to this afternoon. And an offensive foul on the play. Hoosh with a moving screen. 
Chargers fighting hard to get through that screen and a good call from the official. Keltner inbounds the ball, 10-7 in a frenetic pace in the first two and a half minutes. Just below me, Albert Suniga just walked in the gym as Perry takes a corner three. No good, and again, the rebound's controlled by Hoos. Barlow up top with the ball, hounded well by Mellinger. Hoos at the top, Torre a long three, and he's got it. And Morrisville's come to play early as well. Torrey, who is playing as, a, I think, the only senior, came to play, scored seven of the first ten. Keltner, three-pointer short. Ball's knocked out of bounds, and it will stay with the Mustangs. Chargers showing some full-court man-to-man pressure as we come out of that loose ball rebound. Barlow bringing the ball up. Mellinger pressuring him. Halbert thought about a three. Finds Barlow who hits for three and Morrisville's come out shooting the ball well early. Williams from long range and he answers. 13 all. Good pressure from Mellinger, knocked the ball loose. You're hoping this pressure over time will wear down the Mustangs attack. First substitution of the game, Bird and Herbie Brown check in for Dunstan and Perry. Herbie Brown, John Bird, both have given a spark throughout the season, coming off the bench and continuing to raise the defensive level while allowing us to attack offensively and a steal right off the bat. Finds Brown, he thought about the three, drives in, floater. Keltner follows and scores. Immediate impact as the Chargers stay in the full court pressure. Morrisville's hit us about every shot they've taken, but the Chargers have been able to force a couple of turnovers early. Those of you that tuned in for the women's game, and we just saw a second moving screen. I think that's the second on Hoos, both on the offensive end and immediately up off the bench for the Mustangs. We see number 33, Tyler Bliss, checking into the game. Those of you who were watching the women's game yesterday saw the way Katie Stover was hounding Anderson. And they were seeing a lot of the same thing tonight as Mellinger puts consistent pressure on Barlow. Williams taking another look. Little heat check off the rim, no good. Rebounds controlled by Torrey. Barlow handles the ball up top to Bliss. Back up top towards stolen by Herbie Brown. And he'll cruise in for two. And another easy bucket for the Chargers. They go up four, approaching the 15 minute mark here in a very fast paced championship game. Williams knocks it loose, but it stays with the Mustangs. Morrisville has made four of their first five shots, so they find themselves hanging around despite a couple of early turnovers. And three of those have come beyond, from beyond the three-point arc. Ward handles up top. Here's another three-pointer in the air from Halbert, and he missed it. Torrey was over the back, but Keltner controls the rebound. And pushes, finds Williams. And he turned it over. Got caught in the air. Torrey really has set the pace at both ends, but they're gonna have to ride him for all 40. It'll be interesting to see if he can keep that pace up. Foul call to the play on John Bird on a drive. Looked like they banged feet into each other, but they'll shoot two free throws for Halbert. It's interesting as we watch the game, really, Torrey as a senior has set the tempo. He's playing just under 28 minutes a game. 
but I'm not sure Morrisville's gonna be able to take him off the floor much this afternoon. Hulbert converts both of them. Dunstan checked back into the game at that break. As did P Perry, so Keltner gets his first breather of the night. Dunstan looked at a three, swings the ball to Brown. Brown the corner to Perry. Williams top, got a good look. Knocks it down. 2015, good patience. And a timeout for the Chargers. 2015. It's the pace that entertains everybody. 14-12 to go. Chargers 20, Mustangs 15. We'll take a brief timeout. Back to you, Pete. Thanks, uh, Josh. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll take a brief break. We'll be right back in just a second. a hero is it the strength of his hands or the faith in his heart Samson Morrisville inbounds the ball Carter showing full court pressure Doubles Ward in the corner. He finds Barlow. Gave up his dribble. But they get it across the timeline to Torrey, back to Ward, and Barlow sets up the offense. Chargers in a man to man defense. Torrey going to work on Bird and finishes strong at the bucket. A tough matchup for John Bird to keep up with the quickness and size of Torrey. Good find to Williams down low. Kicks it back out to Dunson, swings to Brown. Three-pointers in the air and good! Herbie Brown with a three-pointer. The Charger movement against the zone has been outstanding early. See if they can raise the level of the defense end of the floor as coaches begging for more defensive play. Bliss of three-pointers, no good air ball. Torrey was over the back again, second time they haven't called it. And Willie, Herbie Brown lost the handle. Chargers have opened up hitting five three-pointers early. They haven't shot the ball well the last few games, so they may be overdue for that this afternoon. The crowd imploring defense. Morrisville, an excellent three-point shooting team. They missed their last two, and Williams controls the board. Chargers by six, under 13 to go, first half. Williams for three. Dunstan the board, found Perry. Lamps good. Great touch pass from the player of the year, CJ Dunstan finding Perry for the layup. And I believe Morrisville's gonna take a timeout. Biggest lead of the afternoon, Chargers 25, Mustangs 17. We'll be back after a short break. Let's go down to uh, center court and check in with uh, Zach Freeman. Zach, you have some uh, stats for us as we uh, sure. get going early. What do you have? Sure. This far, Bryce Williams, 11 points already today for the Chargers on four of six shooting. He had just 16 yesterday, and many of them coming at the free throw line uh, in the final minutes yesterday as uh, Suni Pali tried to extend the game. So he's the only player in double digits right now for the Chargers. Uh, Ibrahim Torre, nine points on three of three shooting, uh, added a three-pointer in there as well. Been great on both ends of the floor, a couple steals already. Chargers as a team shooting 63%, uh, 10 of 16. Meanwhile, Morrisville State 56%, 5 of 9. So uh, both teams coming out here on fire right away. And uh, Chargers shoot, uh, scored 60 points uh, in the first half in their uh, regular season meeting here with Morrisville State. And this is the exact pace. So Morrisville is able to stay with them here a bit more as the Chargers had a 60-29 lead at halftime in the first uh, meeting between these two teams. But uh, Morrisville State definitely playing well today. All right, thanks, Zach. 25-17, LBC up by 8. Back to Josh. Thanks, Pete. And thanks, Zach. And you're exactly right, Zach. The pace, very similar to the game up at Morrisville earlier this season. And the Chargers love playing that. But clearly Morris, led by their senior, Ibrahima Toure, have come to play today as well. Ward inbounds the ball to Barlow. And we're back underway. Dunstan has switched over to Toure. 
They're clearly looking to come out of this play down to Torrey. Torrey going to work on the deep player of the year who knocks the ball loose. Long threes in the air, no good. And out of bounds. Solid defensive possession. It's fun for me standing up here watching. C.J. Dunstan was bummed that ball went out of bounds because he realized his teammate, Dondre Perry, was off to the races for a highlight dunk. Williams to Dunstan. Dunstan to Brown. Brown to Williams. Morrisville in that 2-3 zone. Lob up high. Dunstan puts it down. <laughs> Fell asleep on the backside, and Williams found Dunstan. Chargers by 10, under 12 to go. Barlow up top. A little more patience from the Mustangs. I think an anticipated call by the official. Keltner just picked up his second. Melling and Bird. It will be interesting to see. I think this is a time when you see the second team see if they can carry the momentum from the early start. Free throws no good from Torre. Multiple substitution. Livesey, Mellinger, and Bird for Keltner, Williams, and Brown. Halbert gets his first break of the game. Marsfeld's looking at showing a little pressure coming out of this made free throw from Torre. But no, instead they'll drop into, looks like more of a 3-2 zone. Maybe a little 1-2-2 as they extend a little bit. Perry skip past to Livesey. Mellinger up top to Dunstan. Back to Livesey, thought about the three. Nice find inside, Livesey. Thought about it, Mellinger, three-pointers in the air. Halfway down, Dunstan looked like he got fouled, missed the easy layup. Morrisville controls the rebound, down nine. And they're wanting to go almost every possession through Torrey. Ward with the basketball, Barlow. It is an absolutely sold out gymnasium today. Shots in the air from Barlow, no good. Perry controls the rebound, finds Mellinger. Swings the basketball to Livesey and he'll reset against the 2-3 matchup zone of the Mustangs. Ward extending a little pressure, making Dunstan go wide. And the Chargers patiently working the ball against the zone. Five on the shot clock. Long one from Mellinger. No good, and Torrey controls the board. Probably one of the better possessions for the Chargers. Torrey, who's been a man at both ends of the floor in a big way for the Mustangs. Barlow looks to penetrate. Mellinger all over him. Ward looking for a ball screen. Gets it. Goes under. Takes a three. No good. But the rebound's knocked out. Controlled by the Mustangs. Cook knocked it along. Barlow looked like he traveled. Oh, Torre, he's got a matchup. It's a good double to stay with. Smart double. And Torre emerges with it and scores. Coach Filson's begging for a call. He's doing what everybody else here saw, or that's saying. Torrey may have taken three, four, five steps with the basketball. Daly checks in for the first time. Torrey's touching it just about every possession. Long two pointers in the air, no good. Chargers have got to get the rebounds and they're getting beat on the offensive end. Getting out work from the support players for the Mustangs and you give them a lot of credit. Seven point game under 10. Fouls on Livesey on the block. It'll be ball out of bounds to Mustangs. Morrisville winning the rebound battle 9-8. 
The last time these teams met, it was 38-28 Chargers, so they definitely want to take care of their glass. Let me make a correction there. Yesterday, SUNY Poly out rebounded the Chargers 38-28. So this is a slight Achilles heel as we go along. Good board pulled down by Bird. A wide open three was missed. Brown back to the scorer's table. And a blocking foul. It's on the floor. Oh, they're going to call it a shooting foul. It's underneath. Harvey Brown, if that was a shot, it looked like one of mine from college. No chance of going in. Torrey getting his first breather of the night. 11 and a half minutes in, minutes in. Mustangs down seven. Brown the corner to Dunstan, back to Brown. 17 footers in the air, no good. And Birds over the back. The official took a long look at John Bird on that rebound. Chargers six foul and Bird second. So Keltner's coming back. He's playing with two fouls as well. So a little bit of foul trouble for the Charger bigs, although they're very diverse and a lot of different lineups they can show with C.J. Dunstan. And a steal by Yana, good steal. But the referee said Brown, Brown had his foot on the line as he knocked the ball loose. They're giving Brown possession, so they reset the shot clock back to 30. The Mustangs didn't bounce with the new shot clock. Good pressure and a tough spot to get it in, but they do. And Daly handles in the open floor, pushing up across the timeline. Mellinger defending him tightly. Daly is the one player who was here four years ago when they won it. A very interesting drive and basket. Joe Halbert with the finish and the foul. C.J. Dunstan looked like he initiated the contact. Seven fouls now on the Chargers to just three on the Mustangs. But the Chargers still find themselves leading by five. But the pace has slowed more towards the Mustangs' favor. Free throws good by Halbert. Eight minutes to go, Chargers by four. Championship winner guarantees a bid. Great find to Dunstan. Williams from his knees with a no look pass. Chargers by six. Bonaparte to Daly and Daly with Mellinger all over him. The fans imploring the defensive effort from the Chargers. Ball knocked away by Brown. Next foul on the Chargers will bring the one and one for the Mustangs. Pull up jumpers long. Back tapped again. The Chargers have got to get better on the defensive end. They're just looking to tip it along. Really controlling the offensive glass. Looked like a kick and a foul on the play. Goes the Chargers way. Torrey's going to come back. Drew's going to come back. Award's going to come back. So just a minute and 12 second break. The, the Mustangs coach, Joseph Smith, outstanding coach, knows what it's like, and he's asking the official about a kickball, and I thought the same thing he did, but the officials didn't. Torian Ward close in. Keltner wide open three. Got it, and the Chargers go back up nine. A miss in the zone. The Chargers look to extend the lead. Daly. Extended his shoulder, but nothing called. That's a good no call from the official. Geldner missed a chance at a great steal. Ward driving way in, throws up an off balance shot. Chance to run, Williams open from three, thought about it, and a sloppy turnover. A bad mistake from the Chargers. Keltner right back with a three. No good, Torrey the rebound. 
It's the pace you live with of the Chargers, though. Seven-point lead, Torrey pushes. He looked like he traveled. Me and 300 other people agree, but again, just like the official missing the kick, they missed some of these. Ward asking for a ball screen, then a long three that gets very little, but again, Marsville, an offensive rebound. Good box out from Keltner, and he controls the board three on three. And he pushes and scores. That's one of those that the coaches say, oh, it went in, good shot. But it wasn't a good shot. But we'll take it, it's championship basketball, 34-25. Keltner with 10 on the night, he had four the last time they met. And Herbie Brown with the reach foul. And the Mustangs will go back to the free throw line for the one and one, I believe Halbert will be shooting. Keltner, who has 10 on the night, had four in the final the last time he's, that he played in this championship game. So he's come to play. The youngest of four who have gone through this program made an incredible impact. And two of them are here tonight watching, cheering on their younger brother, who's bigger and stronger than all of them now. Albert kindly, calmly knocks down the first free throw, cutting the lead to eight. Halbert was eighth in the conference this year in free throw shooting as he knocks down the second. Chargers by seven, under six to go, first half. Morrisville stays in that zone. Nice move by Brown, finds Perry. Perry back to Brown, Brown baseline jumper, and it stays down. Came halfway out, fell back down, Chargers by nine. Ward corner to Torre. Torre thought about the shot. Long 19 footer, no good. Williams the board, pushes to Dunstan. Oh, he got hammered. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> Referee got it. He just got it half a second after I did. Great loose ball effort. I'll tell you something right now, just before we go to the timeout. The effort the Mustangs and Chargers are extending here is second to none. This is championship basketball and give both teams a whole lot of credit. When the ball hits the floor, you'll see three or four bodies on the floor every time. We're taking timeout, 36-27 Chargers, 5-14 to go. Back to you, Pete. All right, thanks, Josh. A lot of horses in the gym today, uh, Zach Freeman, Chargers, Mustangs, uh, and their button heads. That's right. Everyone uh, everyone picked their favorite horse today. It's great. So the Derby's in a couple of months. I'll look for you uh, for some bets there, Pete. Uh, so far, statistically, uh, Torre, Ibrahim Torre, the only player in double figures for the Mustangs, 12 points on four of eight shooting. He's three of four from the free throw line. Uh, Joe Holbert has uh, seven points. He's five of five from the free throw line. You heard Josh mention he finished eighth uh, in the NIAC this season in free throw shooting. Uh, for the Chargers, Bryce Williams, team high 11 points, four of six shooting, three three-pointers. Kirk Keldner in double figures with 10 points, four of six from the floor as well. Uh, Herbie Brown, a nice seven points coming off the bench. Dunstan just four points, two of four. We've seen him have quiet first halves and come out of the half uh, halftime break uh, man possessed. So uh, we'll see how it goes here for both teams. Like Josh said, they're playing really well. Back and forth, the pace has been at the Chargers' legging for much of the first half here, so we'll see how long that stays. Okay, getting back into it here with a uh, nine-point lead. The uh, Chargers uh, have the ball under their hoop. Josh? Thanks, Pete and Zach, and Bryce Williams to inbounds, brings it to Keltner, long NBA, Steph Curry range three. It's no good, and Torre controls the rebound. Five minutes to go, nine-point lead. These are the ones we talked about last night in the ladies' semifinal game. Do you go in up three, four, or five at halftime, or can you push this to 12 or 13? Ward uses the ball screen. Cross court, wide open three, and it's good. Barlow knocks down the triple. The Chargers push. Brown finds Keltner corner. Perry on the swing into the paint. Ward the rebound. And the Mustangs have a chance to cut into that six-point deficit. 4.30 to go. Barlow to Torrey. Torrey to Ward. Thought about a three. Tough shot. 
No good, good rebound Dunstan. Williams with a quiet but solid box out. Brown uses the screen from both Dunstan and Keltner. Finds Keltner, little short jumper's good. Keltner with 12, the Chargers up eight. Four minutes to go, first half. That's right in Keltner's range. He's worked hard to improve his intermediate game. And a steal. Dunstan ahead of the field. Throws down the dunk after a feed from Keltner. It's a 10 point lead and the place is going bananas. Barla looks for a high screen. Foose has been called for two moving ones. Almost got a third. Wise if the Mustangs get it down to Torrey and they do. He goes to work. Tough turnaround's good. That kid is a player. Eight point lead, but the Chargers run. Curry handles left side to Brown, to Keltner. Back to Brown. Williams was open to Dunstan. Drives in, strong finish, pass. it's good. You're not going to stop the NEAC player of the year when he gets in that deep. And with Hoos playing with two fouls, makes it even easier. Thought about the three, Hoos goes back to Torre, he shoots the three, back of the rim, rebound, Perry, ripped it away from Hoos. And the officials will meet whether the ball got tipped away. And I think they got it right. The Charger fans don't like it, but I believe it's the right call. Perry lost the handle at midcourt. 2.47 to go, and the Chargers need another defensive stop. Perry and Dunstan sit down. Mellinger and Bird into the game. Barlow cleared out, and somewhere they're gonna have to call it second or third time. In close, and Jordan Hoos, quick with the second jump, tips in his own miss. Keltner again, a little fade away, and he's money on that shot. He's got 14, the Chargers by 10. See if Mellinger can force a turnover. Keltner's hit two straight fadeaways, the last two shots he's taken. Barlow handles up top, they're gonna go to Foray. Torre all the way on the wing, thought about a three, drives in off the window and he gets the kind roll. Nice finish from Torre. Charger lead eight and we're under two minutes to go. In an entertaining first half of basketball. Perry handles to Keltner. Keltner finds Bird, Bird inside, finishes the foul. Nice find from Kurt Keltner, but you gotta respect the jumper because he's just knocked down two of them. Defense in that zone steps as the Chargers begin to probe that defense. Bird will go to the line to look to complete the three point play and give the Chargers their leadest, biggest lead of the first half. Bird misses the free throw, but it should stay. Looked like it was tipped by a Mustang. Substitution into the game, Dunstan returns. He replaces Kurt Keltner, who sits down with two fouls and 14 big points here in the first half. Chargers by 10. Under two to go in the first half. I didn't see it, but it looked like a fan took a little bump from that ball. Should be taken away. Oh, and a foul, good call by the official. Bird's gonna walk to the end of the floor. Barlow lost the handle, then committed the foul. Bird's gonna go shoot the one and one That's Barlow's second. John Bird going to the free throw line. A year ago, 46 points is all the Chargers scored in the semifinal game. In the final, I'm sorry, I make that correction. John Bird looks to match, actually surpass that here in the first half if he can knock down the first free throw. And he does. 
my late father used to always say they're called free for a reason. So you work at them and you knock them down. John Bird did so on the first. He's short on the second and the rebound's controlled by Morrisville. Halbert controlled. Daly's on to the game. And a silly foul by John Bird. Pretty easy call as he picks up his third foul. Just a little over anxious. Going to the free throw line. Keltner's gonna return for Bird. Torrey's gonna go to the line for the one on one. He's a 73% free throw shooter on the season. And a big miss and Williams claims the rebound. Finds Perry in the open floor. And that's a goaltend. It's an easy call. Even, even most of the Morrisville faithful recognize the ball was on the rim. Chargers by 13. This possession's a big one as the Mustangs must stay within shooting distance of the Chargers. Daly with the ball, the Chargers showing full court pressure. Looked like a travel, no call. Hoos finds Torrey. And an offensive foul. Big call, but the right call. Keltner drew it. He was there about three seconds earlier, but Torrey lowered the shoulder. That's Torrey's second foul as well, and this team needs him on the floor. He has been the heart and soul of the Mustangs. One minute to go in the first half. Chargers by 13. We set at the five minute mark. Are they gonna go in up three or four or up eight or 10 or push it even double digit, digits? Keltner handles, goes in strong, draws contact and shoots two. Hoos just got his third. Chargers by 13 with Keltner going to line for two. And I believe Brown's going to come in for Keltner. Smart move by first year coach Zach Filson. Making sure Keltner doesn't pick up his third foul of the first half. When the Chargers get to 50 each half, they are tough to beat. And Keltner has an opportunity twice to get them there. First free throws in the air, but short. Brown's waiting at the table for the to replace Keltner, Fusen, as well as Torre go off the floor. Chargers by 13. Keltner second is in the air, in and out. Rebound controlled by Taylor. And an easy bucket given up by for Cook. Nice look ahead from the Mustangs. And the Chargers will work the ball a little bit with 30 seconds. 20 on the shot clock, 30 on the game clock. Looking to run something out of that 2-3. Williams to Keltner, Keltner, Mellinger, deep three, got it! Big three, 10 seconds to go. Ward pushes it, knocked out of bounds by Williams. First three-point bucket by Mellinger, but it's a big one, giving the Chargers the biggest lead of the half, 52-38. Coach Smith calling something out for the Mustangs to get a last-second shot. Holbert to inbounds. I suspect they'll look for Ward. Ward sets the back screen, and he gets it. Thought about a three, finds Daly, who will take the three. In and out, rebounds controlled by Dunstan. Ball's knocked loose, and there's your first half. A good one for the Chargers. And the fans rise as one, including the Mustang fans, because they brought all they have, but the Chargers have had the answer in the first 20 minutes. They lead 52-38. We'll be back to bring you the second half. Back to Pete and Zach. All right, Josh Beer's on the call this afternoon, and a lot of excitement in the gym here at Horse Athletic Center on the campus of Lancaster Bible College. Our score 52-38 here at the half. We'll have uh, coming up uh, some statistical information from Zach Freeman. That'll be in a few minutes. We'll also hear from Jordan Mellinger uh, this afternoon as well. Some of his thoughts about his time here at LBC and uh, the basketball program itself and then uh, some uh, extra activities that he's been involved with uh, in the last year or so that he uh, uh, shared with us as well. So that'll all be coming up here in just a little bit. 
52-38, LBC up as we uh, head to intermission here. We'll be back. LBC Chargers Athletics is made possible in part by Kistler Tiffany Benefits, serving as LBC's preferred employee benefit firm. Headquartered in Berwyn, Pennsylvania, KTB offers a comprehensive suite of products and top-rated services in the areas of benefit administration, wellness, compliance, HR management, and voluntary benefits designed to help meet clients' business and healthcare objectives. On the web at ktbenefits.com by Orthopedic Associates of Lancaster with convenient office locations in Lancaster, Willow Street, Lebanon, and its Spooky Nook Sports Complex, offering complete, comprehensive orthopedic care, including physical therapy, hand therapy, MRI, and outpatient surgery. To learn more, visit online fixbones.com. By World Team, a church planting mission agency working among the world's least reached peoples sharing the gospel through culturally relevant outreach from medical care to arts to sports. More about World Team and opportunities to serve cross-culturally at us.worldteam.org. By Lancaster Toyota. For your next vehicle or for friendly service, stop in to see our friends on Enterprise Road in East Petersburg. Online at LancasterToyota.com. Lancaster Toyota. Let's go places. By Pennsylvania Leadership Charter School a cyber school for students in kindergarten through 12th grade who reside in Pennsylvania. The Pauks community digitally connects students and parents to Pennsylvania certified teachers and innovative curriculum. More information online at palks.org. That's P-A-L-C-S dot org. What defines a hero? Is it the strength of his hands? Or the fate? in his heart. The Chargers Club seeks to enhance the student-athlete experience at Lancaster Bible College by providing quality equipment, updated facilities, and increased opportunities for students to use athletics as a platform for ministry. As a member of the Chargers Club, you're investing in something far greater than athletics. You're helping to provide opportunities that encourage students to pursue excellence in all aspects of life. Visit the Foundations tab on the web at lbcchargers.com to join the team behind the teams. We're at halftime here at the Horse Athletic Center on the campus of Lancaster Bible College. And uh, we have had an exciting first half, uh, back and forth for a bit, but uh, LBC stepping up uh, the game a little bit here as we uh, head toward halftime. Zach Freeman's going to join us here in just a second. And, uh, Zach, we've had a, a really uh, hard-fought battle here the first half, but uh, LBC's got a little bit of momentum as we uh, went into halftime. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's uh, I think these are the two best teams. I think that's what you want in the, in the final game of the, of the season here and uh, in the conference play, and uh, I think these are the two best teams. I think they're showing that today. They're back and forth battle. They both have things that they do well. It's just a matter of whose things they do well is going to come out here on top. And uh, for a lot of that first half, it was the Chargers, but give Morris Hill State credit. They withstood that early you know, five, little 5 nothing run, and the place is going crazy, and uh, they were able to withstand that and take a little bit of a lead there for a little while, and they're still in the game. You know, We keep having these possessions where you think, okay, if the Chargers can get a bucket here, then it's this, and then that could be, you know, whatever. see how the momentum goes. But uh, it's clear that Morrisville State's here to play, and uh, I would expect nothing uh, but the same in the second half from Morrisville State. They're well coached. They have good players. They have some seniors on the team that can lead as well. And like Josh said a couple times, they've played in this game annually, except for last season, basically. So um, they're very familiar with this territory, and the coaches have obviously prepared them for this. So um, 
Stats-wise, uh, Ibrahim Torre, 6 of 11 from the floor, 3 of 5 from the free throw line for 16 points. Uh, still the only Mustang in double figures. Uh, Joe Holbert has 7 points, and uh, Barlow with uh, 6 points here uh, to go with a steal in 15 minutes. So uh, as a team, they shot 41%, 13 of 32. Uh, just 4 of 14 uh, from beyond the arc. They're a great shooting three-point team, so it's definitely below their season average. Uh, for the Chargers, they shot 63% as a team, 22 of 35 from the floor, 7 of 16 from three-point range. Uh, they're led by Kirk Keltner's 14 points. He's 6 of 9 from the floor to go with his three assists and three rebounds. Bryce Williams uh, had a great start there to the game, 11 points, 4 of 6 from the floor, 3 of 5 from beyond the arc. So uh, C.J. Dunstan has eight points and five boards to go with three assists. So just a matter of everyone kind of filling in. Uh, Dondre Perry is doing a couple, has five assists. That's well above his season average. So players doing little things to contribute to the team and make sure that uh, uh, they're doing the right, the right little things to help the team win. So got a lot of players in the Lancaster Rival team that have sat on that bench the last two years and watched another team cut the nets down. So uh, hopefully using that for some motivation today and uh, in the first half, first 20 minutes, it's paying off for them. Yeah, uh, and it's uh, nice to see Keltner bounce back. A little struggle yesterday offensively, but, uh, boy, he's, <laughs> he's on today. Yeah, no, it's doing well today. Off, yeah. Josh has mentioned that a couple times about uh, uh, him using that little fadeaway. He gets into the middle of that 2-3 zone when teams play zone against us. They find him from the inside, and he kind of takes one dribble to the outside. Fadeaway goes right in. Yes. So a uh, nice little signature shot he has there, and uh, as long as they keep going in, he can do it as many times as he wants for he, us. He's so. in the pocket. That's yes, that's exa <laughs> very good. I like that. <laughs> so Excellent. Right, uh, just a uh, logistical question then. Yes. So after this game, uh, will the ceremony be held they, uh, for the men? They are going to have the ceremony uh -huh, after okay. this game. So the women's game, uh, we were told by the commissioner of the NIAC that even if the game has to start a little late, uh, you're supposed to have all of your conference tournament games done by 5 o'clock so that the NCAA knows all of the automatic bids so they can start figuring out who's going to get those at-large bids. But I guess there's a window of time there where you're allowed to say, hey, it's going to be 5-10 or, hey, it's going to be 5-15. And as long as you let them know, uh, they're pretty aware. It's not like anyone from this conference is going to get uh, an at-large bid this year. So uh, they're kind of just waiting to see who the uh, automatic qualifier is. So uh, they are going to cut the nets. They are going to have the presentation. I think they'll move it along, clearly. But uh, both women's teams have been informed that they're going to have that uh, at the end of uh, this game. So, uh, you know, the, it's supposed to be 2.30 on the start. That's not going to be 2.30 for the women's game, but probably a, a three-ish type of start. So okay, so usually 20 minutes after uh, everything's finished. They'll still put the 20 minutes on the clock whenever they're done. Uh, the women's games have been going a little bit quicker uh, the past couple of weeks here anyway. So we'll see if that uh, holds. I'm sure now that we're doing this, it's going to be a triple overtime classic <laughs> that goes till 6 o'clock. But I don't have to make that phone call, so uh, I'm good to go down here. But uh, right. now uh, they are going to cut the nets, and we'll have the uh, all of the men's ceremonies and awards. We'll wrap all that up here after this game. All right. Thanks, Zach. Great. Thanks, Pete. See you in a bit. You out. Zach Freeman with us, uh, getting, getting us straight on all the stats and uh, information from the first half. We'll have uh, the second half coming up uh, in just a little bit. Uh, we've got about six and a half minutes to go. Spoke to uh, Jordan Mellinger uh, a little while back and uh, got some thoughts from him on uh, this season and also uh, some activities he's been engaged in over the uh, recent months. Okay, Jordan, uh, how would you describe the season so far and uh, what's contributing to the high level of play, you think, by the team? Um, so far, it's obviously been a huge success. No losses, so I really can't complain about anything. Um, I think the success really comes, stems from our coach. Um, he came in and implemented a system that really fits our guys. We're really athletic. He lets us get up and down. He breeds confidence with our shots. I mean, you're not going to get pulled out if you take a bad shot, if you miss, miss a shot, make a mistake. So it really breeds confidence in our system, and a lot of our guys have thrived. So I think mostly it comes from what he implemented and so a lot of uh, our success is con attributed to him. Uh, earlier in the season, uh, an injury kept you out of the gym and off the court for about 10 days. Um, other than dealing with the pain of the injury itself, how difficult was it to watch and not participate? Um, obviously, it hurts sitting out um, when you're a main contributor, letting other guys step up. But, I mean, they stepped up. They did what they needed to do. So me being off the court didn't really hurt us. Obviously, we still succeeded, so it was easier on me knowing that we had younger guys that could step up and fill that role when I was out. So um, props to them, and I think that um, shows that going forward, our program is still going to be successful, even when some of the upperclassmen leave and some of our main contributors are gone. We have other guys that are going to be able to fill that role, so it, uh, it's exciting for our future of our program. Yeah, uh, did you learn anything about yourself in the process of uh, having to watch? Um, for sure. Um, I mean, I was up there supporting my, our, my teammates as much as I could. They, they support me. So 
Um, I learned I learned a lot of patience. I mean, obviously, it wasn't anything I could control. So, kind of just sat back and it's kind of like a coaching role in a way, being an upperclassman, trying to lead my teammates and help them out in any way I could. But uh, yeah, they definitely filled that role and succeeded. So, how, how uh, has LBC contributed to uh, your your personal development? For example, um, as a Bible college, how has it prepared you for uh, athletics, but also for life as well? Um, when faced with uh, adversity, it helped me um, mature a ton. I used to get angry or get upset and just like lash out, whereas uh, now I kind of can deal with things a lot better. Um, obviously, faith plays a huge role in how I deal with things and the um, trials and tribulations life throws at you. I mean, it's t taught me to rely on God r rather than deal with things on my own. There's always people there for me, so this definitely has played a huge part in my life already. You and two teammates traveled to Spain last summer and uh, to conduct basketball camps in partnership with World Team. Uh, what was your experience like there? Oh, man, Spain was awesome. Um, the kids were really receptive to everything that we were trying to teach them, basketball and uh, spiritually, which was really cool because I wasn't sure how they were going to react. It was a, a highly uh, Catholic environment, so they were really receptive. They, they opened up about a lot of stuff, um, open to learning new things about basketball, about Christianity. Um, it was a really unique experience with the language barrier and everything because none of us knew how to speak Spanish, but it was really cool. Like, great experience. Would recommend it to anyone. Really good time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so uh, maybe in the future uh, there might be some other things LBC can do through the athletics department uh, that, that would be beneficial for the players and for the people you're trying to work with. Absolutely. I think um, as LBC grows and our athletic department grows and we continue to be successful, I feel like Opportunities are going to be opened up where we have the chance to go some other places and uh, hopefully spread the gospel as well as spread the skills and knowledge that we've learned. Um, so, yeah, I would, I would really hope that we get more opportunities to continue to do those type of things. Uh, when you finish here, let's say in another five years, what do you hope to be doing? Oh, five years from now? It's uh, a tough question. I don't know. Um, Wherever God leads me is the Bible, the Bible school answer. But truthfully, I'm just I'm just looking for His direction in in my life. Um, I really want to enter the corporate world and just see what the the Shark Tank's all about and see see what I can do in that realm. Um, finance has really intrigued me, so maybe getting some investment stuff. I don't know. Wherever wherever my path leads, I'm open to it. Thanks for your time. Oh no problem. Thank you. Appreciate it. defines a hero? Is it the strength of his hands? Or the faith in his heart? LBC up by 14 as we get the uh, second half underway here in just a few seconds. And uh, let's go back to the floor and uh, Josh Peters with the call. Thanks, Pete. And as we return to action, just like we said with five minutes to go, it was an important few minutes. The Chargers have a great opportunity to push and extend this lead in the first few minutes. 
or Morrisville needs to desperately get this lead into single digits and hang around as long as possible looking to pull the monumental upset. Ward inbounds the ball to Barlow. Barlow handles up top, Mellinger all over him. And a steal by Keltner. Three on two with numbers, finds Mellinger corner, three is in the air. And Keltner had good position but left his feet early and instead the rebound was controlled by Torrey. Looked like he didn't see that little touch of the window that put the ball higher in the air. Ward throws it away and Dunstan the steal. Sloppy from the Mustangs early. Little miscommunication. Williams handles. Keltner open. Thought about the three. Mellinger open. Who's playing with three fouls? Dunstan about the NBA line. Dunstan high post. Kicks out to Perry. Perry 17 footer. In and out. Torrey another rebound. That was halfway down, but came out, and we're scoreless in the first minute of the half. Couple turnovers for the Mustangs, couple of missed shots for the Chargers. Torre thought about a three. Halbert calls for the ball screen. In deep to Hoos, heel of the rim, no. Dunstan takes the ball off the tip from Keltner. Two high screens, Williams to Mellinger, back to Williams. Finds Perry, high post, kicks to Keltner, to Williams. Thought about the three, steps in, three in the air, good! And the first one of the second half comes from Bryce Williams, three-point shot. Williams hit three out of five, and he adds to that with his fourth triple of the night to go with his 14 points. Halbert, the Hoos. They're going almost every possession to Torrey. Tough shot, good finish, and a foul. Dunstan picked up his second. Looks around and unsure, but a good solid move to the basket by Torrey. Looking to complete the three-point play and cut the deficit back to 14, and he does. Kelton to Williams. Morris will stay in that 2-3 zone. Kelton to right side, extended. Drives in, little fadeaway jumper. He didn't miss that first half, but that one rolls off the iron. Dunson's attempt to tip it home, but controlled by the Mustangs, who look to push. Little hand check foul call to the play. Jordan Mellinger picking up his first second of the half for the Chargers. Mustangs to end bounds the ball underneath their own basket. And Barlow to throw it in. Finds Hoos, working hard down low. Nice up and under and in. Good use of the left hand for Jordan Hoos. Playing with three fouls, cuts the lead to 12. Williams to answer, and he does. His fifth triple in the game. Hoos setting a good solid screen. Yeah, another one of those, not sure we wanted that quick, but Williams knocked it down. Off the hands of Torrey, the third turnover in the first three minutes. Chargers by 15 with possession. Williams handling the ball up top. Sets the offense as the Chargers look to attack the zone. Mellinger asking for a ball screen. It came from Perry and now from Keltner. The Chargers are a little bit patient right now. Finds Keltner high post. Finds Dunstan who got hammered. And Ward picks up the foul and Dunstan will shoot two off the nice feed from Keltner. That's Ward's first and the team's first here. Dunstan looking to extend the Chargers 15 point advantage. He calmly knocks down the first. Giving him nine on the night. Hangs on the rim, but no good. And Torrey claims another rebound. 
Torrey with 19 and nine, and he has literally put the Mustangs on his shoulder. Barlow had it knocked loose, a lot of great pressure. Mellinger all over him. Offensive foul. Joe Hallberg, wave off the bucket. It's the right call, but Morrisville's gonna need those calls to go their way if they're gonna be able to pull out the upset tonight. And with that, Coach Joseph Smith takes time out. 16 point lead for the Chargers. We're gonna take time out with them. Back to Pete and Zach. Okay, thanks a lot, Josh. Let's go to the huddle and listen to uh, Coach Philzy. George Mop, hit Kurt if they step up. If you're open, shoot it. If they step up, they hit They should post up the middle guy. All right, here we go. All right, Coach Philzy with some instruction there. We got a piece of that. Uh, Josh, uh, we're up by, what, uh, 16 at this point? 16 and a half to play. There you go. Thanks, Pete. And uh, as we came out of the half, up 14, I think if the Chargers push it to 20, it should be all theirs down the stretch. Morrisville desperately trying to get this into single digits. Staying in that zone. A little more patience from the Chargers offensively. Dunstan thought about a three inside to Keltner. Skip to Williams, wide open three. Automatic! Chargers by 19. Morrisville showed their first man to man of the second half, and the Chargers walked right through it, setting up their lethal three point shooter, Bryce Williams, knocking down his sixth of the night, and Mellinger with a steal to Dunstan. Finds Perry, takes the foul. And that's Foo's fourth, and it's an intentional foul. Folks, this place is going crazy. I'm surprised by the intentional foul. I thought he went up and challenged well, and the Mustangs are wondering the same thing. They're going to talk this over. Either way, Perry's going to go to the line and shoot two. We just don't know if it's going to be two in the ball or if it's just going to be a regular foul. I don't know how you take away an intentional once you call it. I know. And they Bryce, are you're saying the, trail. the intentional foul. Uh, Dre right here. If I'm the Mustangs coach, Jordan, I'm okay. respectfully Kurt, asking for an explanation, and he is. And now we have the explanation from our scores table, and the, the foul took place in the head area, and that's why the intentional foul. So it's a flagrant foul. And Perry steps up and gives the Chargers a 20-point lead. And now he understands the explanation. Coach Smith, while he might not be happy with it, accepts the call. Chargers lead by 21 as Perry knocks down both. And I tell you what, as I watch that Coach Smith, an absolute class act, knows how to have his team compete in these big games, has taken the Mustang teams to both the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight in NCAA three tournaments. But it's gonna take a monumental effort to find a way tonight. Alley-oop to Dunstan on the lob from Williams. And I'm telling you, the roof is no longer on this place. Dunstan touched it when he went up. And the fans took the rest of it off. Little floater and they count the bucket. Hulbert with the finish, the foul, and the play on Bryce Williams. The place is still going crazy after that alley-oop dunk to C.J. Dunstan. Chargers by 21. Hulbert with a chance to cut it to 20. This place is still just rocking from that dunk just a few moments ago as Halbert steps up to try to complete the three-point play. And he calmly does. An outstanding free throw shooter. That inbounds play, we've seen it before if you've been following the Chargers all season. They executed that time to perfection. Morrisville in a man-to-man -man defense. They don't show a lot of that. 
Dunstan from long range, no good. Barlow pushes. And he has generously rewarded a timeout. He rolled over. I'm not sure if I saw a headstand or not, but definitely some activity. But they give him a timeout. 15.06 to go. It's just a 30 second timeout. Over to Pete and Zach. All right, thanks a lot, uh, Josh. Uh, 20 point lead. Zach, uh, what do you have quickly from your desk? Sure. Uh, just real quick, Bryce Williams now has 20 points for the Chargers, 7 and 9 from the floor, six three pointers. Keltner with 14, Dunstan with 11 to go along with six rebounds and three assists. Uh, Torre is still with 19 points, and uh, Holbert is now in double figures with 10 points, 6 of 6 from the free throw line. All right, thanks. Uh, 20 point lead again, 15 06 left in the second half. Chargers break the huddle. Back to Josh. Thanks, Pete and Zach. And as we come out of the timeout, Marsfield inbounds to my left. Holbert to throw it in. Bliss has checked into the game, replacing Hoos, who went out with that fourth foul. Barlow handles up top. Finds Torrey. Torrey going to work, drives in, little jump stop. No good, but the rebound comes out to Bliss. Kicks to Barlow, thought about the three. And a blocking foul. Jordan Mellinger picks it up. It's the team's fourth. And Jordan Mellinger's second. His defense has been fantastic throughout the first half and into the second half. Little wet spot on the floor, though. Clean that. A momentary pause in the action. Bliss to throw it in. Finds Barlow. New shot clock and the Morrisville Mustangs. Will work the offense against the Chargers in the man to man. Caleb Taylor also in the game for the Mustangs. Long three pointers off the rim, but Bliss is there to clean up. He missed it though. Torre comes up with it like he has all night. Misses and now Keltner finally clears. Well, he was getting ridden all the way down the floor, but now they'll set the offense. In the man-to-man, -man. the Mustangs have left that zone, trying to up the tempo and get back in the game. Wide open, Williams for a 7-3, and it's automatic. Right now, that man is playing big. Mellinger all over Barlow again. Looked like he traveled. And I'll tell you what, I've been out of coaching for a few years, and I still hate that call. Out of control, throw it up. And they reward him. And it may have been a foul. Barlow to the line, shooting two. That was Dunstan's third. He's got to make sure he stays out of foul trouble. First free throws off the rim, no good for Barlow. I don't think as we watch this game unfold, people realize how difficult it is to come when everybody wants to get your best every night, trying to knock you off. So far, the Chargers have held them off, and Barlow missed both, misses both free throws. Keltner the rebound, 23-point lead for the Chargers. Williams again, no good. 11 now for Torre, almost a steal. Instead, it goes right to Bliss, but he's off with a three, and Brown clears the board. And he pushes himself to Perry, to Williams. Williams finds Perry with a no look, basket and a foul. For those of you watching at home, if we could go to the replay booth, I think we'd just find out that this official wasn't ready for the athleticism of Dondre Perry. But instead, it's his call. He's the official wearing the whistle, making the call. Bryce Williams, seven three-pointers in this championship game, has tied his season high. He had seven against Bradathan earlier in the season. But none bigger than tonight so far. Torre goes strong, no good, gets his own rebound, and he'll finish close to the bucket. He's got 21 on the night. Williams pushes it up, charges by 21. Ball's knocked out of bounds, good defensive play by Ward. 
And here comes Unel Daly into the game, replacing Quail Barlow, who has seen relentless pressure from Jordan Mellinger every time he's touched the ball this game. Dunson has sat down to get a brief rest. Herbie Brown into the game. John Bird into the game. Morrisville back to the zone. Perry right side back to Keltner. This little favorite fade away. No good, but Bird controls with a new shot clock. Williams says three, but it's off. He knew it as soon as he shot it. Daly looking to push. Oh, nice find. Very nice pass from Daly. He found one of the best free throw shooters in the conference, Joe Hallberg, where he'll stick to the line to cut into this 21 point lead. Perry picks up his first foul, team sixth here in the second half. And he misses, which is a rare thing that happens. The Mustangs have now missed three straight free throws and they're gonna need everything to go right in the last 12 minutes if they're somehow gonna get back into this game. Hallberg converts the second and he'll get a brief blow as Bonaparte checks into the game. Morrisville showing full court pressure. Williams sits down, Livesey into the game for him. Smart with Morrisville to show pressure. Dunstan breaks it, finds Bird to Brown, and he resets. To Dunstan to Livesey. Thought about the three. Goes top to Dunstan, he'll take it, but it's short, and the rebound from Daly. 20 point lead for the Chargers, 12 minutes to go. Championship game following this one. The ladies of Lancaster Bible College will take on SUNY Poly shortly after this post-game awards and celebration. And a steal from Dunstan. He's in the open floor. Everyone's on their feet, and he calmly throws it down. I'm just going to tell you, folks, everybody wanted something special. And I know Zach Filson likes exactly what he saw. Throw down the dunk. Take the two points, bring this stands to their feet. We're looking for one thing to cap this incredible career for C.J. Dunstan, and that's a championship today. And they're on their way to making it happen. Over to Zach and Pete. All right, let's go to the huddle, uh, Josh, and hear what uh, Coach Bills has to say. Moving, get the ball to the room in the high post. The last middle on that two-two. Yes, someone needs to get to the middle on the two-two-one. Okay, if the ball's on this side, and you're the guard right here. I'll flash to the middle, we'll try to look here. If you catch it, you can attack, attack. I'm just caught, get stops down here, settle down a little bit off that. You only have one second. Well, listen, 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 listen. We are, we're settling for some threes right now. Attack the rim, flow into our zone offense, and we'll be all right, all right? Finish this thing strong. Are we in orange play together? Uh, yeah, go orange, orange, orange. Let's go. Hey, four, Where one, three, I? one, two, three. Four, four, four. <laughs> want... Okay, breaking the huddle, 71 to 49 is the score, 11.42 left in the second half, and uh, let's go back to Josh. Josh, you make sense out of the huddle a bit there? Well, I love the timeout that Coach took. Uh, they pushed this lead to 22, and I think he wants to lock them in for the next four or five minutes. They push this thing to 25. Then everybody goes through the motions, and no nothing funny happens. You'd like to think the game is over, but crazier things than this have happened. Morrisville sees the pressure, and I love it coming out of the timeout. Ball inbounds towards, and I expect the Chargers will fall back out of the defense. And they turn it over. Players have to execute, but I'm gonna put two points on the board for Coach Filson. Great adjustment to show pressure out of the timeout. The Mustangs weren't ready for it. An extra possession for the Chargers. No chance at the scoring for the Mustangs. Ball swung to Livesey, Livesey to Brown. Dunstan working the high post, gets it, goes right back to Herbie Brown. Brown to Perry. They look to trap in the corner. They find Brown. He goes back to Perry, thought about the three. Drives in, skip pass, knocked out of bounds. Six on the shot clock. Good hands from Torre as he's been everywhere playing in what could be his final college basketball game, an outstanding career. Charger fans are hoping it's his last one, but he is playing outstanding. Keltner a long three, no good. 
Herbie Brown rips down the board, puts it back in, and that's the Herbie Brown that sparks this team all season off the bench. He embraced his role. He said, whatever you need, coach, and continues to come up with big buckets and big plays all over the place. Chargers by 24. Shots in the air from Ward, no good. Dunstan clears, and the Chargers look to run. Dunstan wisely slows it down, finds Brown, skip to Keltner, Livesey corner three, no good. Good hustle all around, and the Mustangs have a chance to run, and Daly does. Layup's good. Dunstan wisely didn't commit his fourth. But Brown in transition. Cook picks up the foul. Great act of sportsmanship, checking immediately if Harvey Brown's okay. Great look from Dunstan, but again, the headiness of a senior. Didn't commit his fourth foul. Found Brown in transition, and the Chargers have a chance to quickly answer the two from the Mustangs. And give a lot of credit to Storm Cook, hustling back hard there to prevent the easy layup and look like a clean block as well. But Brown misses the first free throw, so he definitely at least got his team a point. Williams comes back in the game for Livesey. Mellinger at the scorer's table to replace Brown as the Chargers will go back to their starting five at the 10 minute mark. Brown hits a free throw and the crowd appreciates the effort at both ends of the floor. A, a big pat from Coach Filson. Chargers full court pressure, knocked away by Mellinger. 23 point lead. And Coach Smith looking down his bench to get Barlow back in the game and he will. There's very little you'll get by Coach Smith. Chargers staying in the pressure. Inbounds to Halbert. The pressure stays. And the Mustangs control. Barlow handling the ball, gets a good screen. Baseline drive, too easy for Halbert. He takes two. Chargers lead 74-53. We're under 10 minutes trying to punch their first ticket in the history of this college to the NCAA tournament. Bryce Williams to Perry. Perry drives in, fadeaway jumper short. Torre another rebound. He'll push himself. Finds Ward in the corner. Ward back up top. Holbert sets, looking for the ball screen from Cook. Ball knocked away but retain Barlow, three-pointers in the air, it's short, and Williams with the rebound. Mellinger wide open, three. Perry high for the board and the putback, and the Chargers by 23. And the faithful here at the Horst Athletic Center can sense this one's gonna go the way of the Chargers. And the student body is begging for another defensive stop. Skip pass to Barlow. Barlow to Ward. He drives in. Pull up runners, no good. Battle for the rebound, comes back to Barlow. Mellinger, what a great job defensively. And a reach in foul on Kurt Keltner. That's his third with eight and a half minutes to go. Substitution into the game. Jordan Hoos and Tyler Bliss return. Replacing Ward and Cook. The one and one for Torre. He missed it, but too easy. Keltner didn't box out. Oh, the ball was in the cylinder. But they didn't call it. We'll just say it still was in the cylinder. I'll look at it at the timeout and the instant replay, but I'm telling you it was in the cylinder. Missed shot, chance to run for the Mustangs. Barlow pushes off and they finally called it. Oh, they're gonna get Mellinger. The good part, and we've said it all season, 
and you take care of business. You don't have to worry about the officials. And two questionable calls. The Chargers still find themselves up 21. Who's playing with four fouls? Barlow calmly knocks down the first free throw and the lead's back to 20 for the first time since the 14 minute mark. He knocks down them both. A little full court pressure. And Keltner will bring it up. Finds Perry. Perry to Keltner to Mellinger. And the Chargers will set, maybe even work the clock a little bit. Dunstan left side. Thought about Pem training. Back in the zone is Morrisville. And they're going to have to up the up tempo if they're going to come back from 19. Short bank shot. Bryce Williams says, you think I can only shoot the three? I'll show you my intermediate game. Nice find from Perry. 21-point lead for the Chargers. Timeout on the floor. 7.51 to go. We'll take timeout with them. Okay, Josh, uh, let's go to uh, the table. To Zach, Zach, uh, what do you have for us? Thanks, Pete. Yeah, four players now, excuse me, five players in double figures for the Chargers, uh, led by Bryce Williams, 25 points. He's 9 of 13 from the floor, including seven three-pointers. Like Josh said, that ties a season high for Williams. 14 points for Keltner, 13 for Dunstan. Perry and Herbie Brown each with 10. For the Mustangs, Torre, 21 points, 15 rebounds. 8 of 16 from the floor, 13 points for Holbert. Those are the only two in double figures. As a team, the Mustangs shooting 41%, 20 of 49. The Chargers shooting 54%, 31 of 57. So, see how it goes down the stretch here, but uh, comfortable lead thus far for the Chargers. Uh, Got to close the deal, though. All right, uh, well done. 21 ahead uh, by LBC, 78-57, 7.51 left. Josh, it's all yours. Thanks, Pete, and thanks, Zach. And it's great to see the Chargers shooting the ball so well after some tough shooting nights. Got off to a great start. Bryce Williams, 25 points have been huge. And Morrisville, the referee's patiently waiting for the inbounds as the Chargers come out in some full court pressure. Hoost to inbounds the ball, having trouble getting it in. And he calls a timeout. And a wise timeout, because you're not going to take them home with you. You're down by 21. You can't afford the turnover. It's another full timeout. Has to be a full. Has to be a full. And a full timeout is called by the Mustangs. In orange right here. A year Stay ago at this time, the Chargers yeah, lost in a heartbreaking final in a very methodical pace. 49-46, CJ Dunson about a 25-footer to tie it. The Chargers came up short. It appears the way they came out that that was gonna be a distant memory and now they're just eight minutes away from erasing that. Bitter defeat and earning a spot in the NCAA tournament. I want to say welcome to so many fans who have continued to text and let us know they're watching all over the country, rooting on the Chargers, alumni, friends of the college. Thanks for your support. And as they say at the table, go Chargers, go. Chargers staying in the full court pressure. Little ball screen to get Barlow open, but they're struggling again to get it in, and it's knocked loose. And they're going to call Mellinger for a foul, his fourth. There's not much you can say or do when an official makes a call like that. Got to go and make sure you seal the rebound. The last time they missed the one and one, the Chargers gave up an easy follow. Control what you can control. We talk about a lot, and right now they got to keep their emotions under control. Make sure they take care of what they need to the final eight minutes. Halbert knocks down the first. It's great to support, see the support from the conference. The head coach from SUNY Poly is here watching the game, along with the coach from Penn State Berks. Appreciate the camaraderie and support of the coaches throughout the conference. 
Halbert knocks them both down. The lead's 19. Williams slipped but gets it back. And now he'll get it across the timeline. And the ball's turned over to Perry. Won a few turnovers here in the second half off the Mustangs' pressure. Only eight turnovers in the game for the Chargers. They'll drop out into the man to man. Barlow handles up top. Goes to Halbert. Halbert won the screen, goes to Hoos. Hoos over to Barlow. Looking down low. The man that's carried him all along, Torre, and he knocks down another mid range jumper, cutting the lead to 17. Closest they've been in a long time. And the Chargers break the pressure. And it's an important possession of them to look to score and kind of take away this little mini run from the Mustangs. Keltner thought about the three, kicks it to a wide open Perry, drives in, floaters in the air. And we got a foul on the play. I have to say this, I didn't see much different from what they called the other end, so a little touch foul. At least when they're consistent, the players can adjust. Perry going to the line, shooting two. First free throw gets the friendly roll. Perry, another senior. Oftentimes an unsung hero on this team. He does a lot of intangibles, great at both ends of the floor. Often recognized for his high flying dunks, but he does a whole lot more than that. Chargers lighter in the pressure, but what they're trying to do is just milk a little more clock as Morrisville walks it up under seven minutes. 80-61, the Chargers. Who's high post, kicks wide to Halbert. Perry all over him, back to Barlow. Looked like he traveled, almost lost it. Solid D by Herbie Brown. Tough shots, no good. Perry claims the board and he gets fouled. Big rebound, Herbie Brown. The Mustangs showing pressure. And if you're a Chargers fan, you just want that clock to run. They seemingly are in complete control. Long inbounds to Dunstan. He thinks about penetrating, but wisely finds the cutter. Keltner's fouled in the play. He'll go to the line, shoot a one and one Halbert just picked up another one. That's his third. Keltner to the line, shooting the one and one trying to extend that lead back to that 20-point margin. Free throw's no good. Hoos does a great job of knocking it over to Torre. Chargers just seven of 14 from the free throw line. Knocked away by Keltner. Hoos controls it, looks for the cutter. Trying to work down low, tough shot. No good, Brown clears another rebound. Looking to run and then he'll pull it up. Under six to go. Chargers by 19. Baseline to Dunstan. Kicks back to Keltner, three-pointers in the air. Got it, the Chargers by 22. 22-point lead and they're beginning to sense it here at the Horst Athletic Center. Torrey handles three-pointers in the air and he answers, back to 19. Morrisville showing a little bit of man-to-man -man or they're gonna drop into the zone. And the Chargers, as much as they want to run, would be wise to run a little clock. Sloppy pass from Perry. And an easy layup for Hulbert. And the lead is cut to 17. Williams easily breaks the double team and draws contact and goes to the free throw line. And that's who we like to see at the free throw line. Grace Williams, I believe, with 25 on the night, looks to add to that total, shooting two free throws. Williams calmly knocks down his 26th point of the night. He'll shoot another. Chargers leading by 18, just over five minutes to go. Doing exactly what you want a championship team to do, and that's methodically put away a tough, opponent. 
Nothing but nylon for Williams on the second and a 19 point lead. Dunstan a steal, layup! 21 point lead. And the Chargers are on the cusp of cutting down the nets for the first time. And a tough shot knocked down by Ward. Really tough shot, nice player. I watched him warm up and he's a gamer and he's got a couple more years left. Mustangs call timeout, down 19, under five to go. Over to Pete and Zach. Okay, thanks Josh. Full timeout on the floor, uh, up by 21 at this point. Let's take a break. We'll be right back, check in with Zach. What defines a hero? Is it the strength of his hands? Or the faith in his heart? All right, Zach, we're back, and we're looking for uh, some information from you. What do you have as we uh, head to the under five now? Sure, five uh, players in double figures here with the Chargers, led by Bryce Williams, 27 points, 9 of 13 from the floor. Uh, Kirk Keltner with 17 points. For the Mustangs, Ibrahim Atore, 26 points, 16 rebounds. Holbert with 17 points, and uh, he is 9 of 10 from the free throw line. So, under five here. All right, Josh, back to you. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Zach. Williams has been so big throughout the game. Chargers with 19 in the ball. Morrisville showing full tort pressure. Ball comes into Williams. He takes a look at it. Finds Dunstan to Keltner. The Chargers will set it up. Run a little bit of clock. Still in that zone defense of the Mustangs. Dunstan comes out high. Ball's knocked away, turned over by Dunstan. Bliss came up with it. Goes down low to Torre. Torre, a nice find. Blocked out of bounds off of the Chargers. The Mustangs will inbounds. 4.14 to go. DeAndre Perry just swatted it out of there. Got fouled on the attempted dunk. Or else ESPN was going to be showing both ends of the floor from Dondre Perry. A lot of smiles from the Chargers right now. But those of your basketball fans out there, this has been an excellent defensive effort. Perry knocks down another free throw. The lead pushes to 20. Back in for the Mustangs, number 12, Joe. Perry to shoot another. Halbert back into the game for Bliss for the Mustangs. And give that Mustangs team a lot of credit. They have battled and battled. But it appears there's just too much for the Chargers tonight. Perry hits them both. Mellinger back into the game. Perry gets a big hand as he comes out. 14 points. Eight assists, four rebounds for Perry. What a complete stat-filling afternoon. Morrisville not in a hurry. Good defense by Mellinger and Keltner controls the rebound. Under four now. And patiently settling it down. And they swing the ball. Fills him with love some patience. Running floater by Williams, no good. And 17th rebound of the night. Pulled down by Ibrahim Torre. He has been a big player throughout the game. But we knew he needed a supporting cast for them to get a win. Keltner knocks it loose. Foose in trouble, sat in the lane the whole time, but nothing's called. That's a long three-pointer attempted by Ward. Dunstan controls three minutes, folks. And now it's just a matter of the clock running down. Three minutes to go, Chargers by 21. We're gonna be dancing for the first time in LBC history in about three minutes. I got the approval from the president. A lot of dancing tonight as we celebrate. 
Dunstan going to the line. Foul was on the floor, so I don't know that it matters, but I think it's two shots. Bless into the game for Hoos. Hoos fouls out, but you'll see him again, a junior forward. Not his best night, got into foul trouble early with a couple moving screens, but he's a good ball player. A lot of moves that he's got, and Morrisville will be back. Dunstan calmly knocks down the first, the 90th point of the night for the Chargers. And it stays at 90 as Ward controls the rebound, Chargers by 22. Ball goes into Torrey, he goes to work on Dunstan. Herbie Brown the rebound, 2.40 to go. And we're about to see the first men's team in the college history. We've had two women's teams make it, but none from the men's side. Missed shot, and Filson says, hold it out. How would you like to open up your college coaching career and win your first 27 games? That's what Zach Filson's about to do. Let pass down low to Dunstan, left hand's good. A 26 point lead. I'm sorry, 24 point lead. Ward, tough shot, no good, Mellinger keeps it alive, Brown controls, two minutes to go. Basket from Williams and a foul. Folks, it's all over, other than a minute 58, but it's 94-68 Chargers. And you're gonna see some guys step on the floor, we're gonna hear it for this senior class. C.J. Dunstan getting a standing ovation. Herbie Brown, the sixth man in my opinion of the year. Kurt Keltner coming up big in this championship game. Folks, the celebration will go on for a long time and they deserve it. These kids have focused each game one at a time and they're gonna be rewarded for a disciplined effort. So thankful for the way these young men conduct themselves as student athletes. Leaders across our campus looking to honoring God with their lives and now using the platform of basketball to continue to bring glory to him. Williams to complete the three-point play. He does, lives these in the game for him. 30 points for Bryce Williams leading the team tonight. And everybody's gonna stay on the game. Fourth time this season, Bryce Williams with 30 points. The Chargers are gonna go to the NCAA tournament. They knew when they came in here, they had to win to go on. There was gonna be no at-large bid, and they left nothing to chance. Leading by 27, senior Nick Monroe pulls down the rebound. He's been with the program for four years. Great to see that young man on the floor getting minutes. Marquise Boone, another senior, heads to the scoring table, along with Luke Roundy, another senior. They've been through some of these disappointing nights and now they're gonna to get to enjoy it on the court for the last 81 seconds. A quick timeout for substitution. The crowd in front of me is on their feet. I believe we're gonna celebrate right after the game with a post-game celebration. Coming up shortly, Nick Monroe handles up top. Drives in, spin move, running floater. In and out. Love how he attacked the basket. Bonaparte pushes the ball up. One minute and five seconds to go in the game. Daly handles up top. Marquis Boone in the game, one minute. And another roar as the crowd with one minute to go. Holbert thought about a three. Foul on Roundy and we'd be disappointed if he didn't pick one up. First free throw, no good from Torre. The fans are saying thank you to Coach Filzen. He's saying just grab a rebound. Second free throw is good. Torre's had an incredible game, but he hasn't had the support cast he needs. 
Constine handles to Marquise Boone. He drives in. A little travel, but the referees know we're trying to wind this game down. Monroe sets it up. Constine up top. 12 on the shot clock. Monroe handles, takes a foul, and he'll shoot two as a senior. After the game, please stay with us. We're going to head down courtside, get some interviews with players, coaches. The celebration has begun. Monroe steps to the line, shooting two. Monroe's first free throw is good. It's fun for me to look, look across and see his parents here celebrating with him. Had ACL surgery a couple years ago. He's battled back, embraced a new role on the team. Happy to see the young man scoring in this championship game. And he converts them both. 28 point lead, 30 seconds left. I hope you can hear me because this place is going crazy. 3 up top, drives in. Foul called in the play, he'll shoot two. <laughs> Ibrahim Torre returns to the line. A fantastic career and a fantastic final game. That young man, along with the entire Mustangs team, has nothing to hang their heads about. They battled and battled but the Chargers brought their A game, and you're not gonna beat the Chargers when they bring their A game. Free throw's good. Good round of applause for Torrey as he comes off the Morrisville faithful rise to celebrate his career. Coach Smith first class with a hug for that young man. Round the inbounds, the ball to Constein. 15 seconds to go. Everybody's on their feet. Boone to Monroe, he'll hold it with 10. Nine, we'll count it down with them. Seven, five, six, four, three, two, one. And the NEAC champions, the Lancaster Bible College Chargers, the fans from the student section come on the court. It's their championship as well. Your final score, Lancaster Bible College 97, Morrisville State Mustangs 71. We'll get post-game analysis and interviews in just a moment. Great scene here at the Horse Athletic Center, 97-71, as the LBC Chargers beat the Marshall State Mustangs. We're going to set up, uh, head to the four, and uh, get some interviews and uh, also uh, see what Coach Filson has to say, uh, some of the players as well, and uh, we'll be uh, having all that for you here coming up in just a bit. <laughs> 